All right, welcome back here to D.C. Roofing Stadium where we are in the 12U division where the West Melbourne Colts will take on the Melbourne Elite Chargers. And I'm Alan Slaughterzinski, joined by Adam Franco and Jack Franco as the uh, Melbourne Elite Chargers get set to kick off. This is a rematch of a game we saw, you saw earlier this year right here on BSN, one in which West Melbourne dominated from start to finish. So we'll see what, if anything, Melbourne's able to do. Here's the kick. It's going to be fielded at the 25, carried out, oh, and guess what? And this he's might gone. Be gone. First play of the game. Touchdown, West Melbourne. How about it, Jack? Great touchdown. Off the kick, off the rip. First play of the game. Cooper Hershey. Uh, I mean, Adam, he ran right past the entire kick team. I think that is up. Oh, there's a flag on the play. Uh-oh. Is it coming back? I think this is coming back. Or is it excessive celebration? Mm, Jiskum didn't grow that one, did he? No, no. He's a... Uh, sideline warning. Yeah, sideline warning. I don't even know what that is. What's the sideline warning? Alan? Yeah, well, we won't talk about that either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> start a list of topics that are off the table for this broadcast. Yeah, our Vero 14U and sideline warnings. <laughs> 9.50 to go. Yeah, I think if you're, if you are the, you see that kick and you see a line drive one bounce to the back line. Probably the guy they said all week, don't kick it at 22. Yeah. At 20. <laughs> and he walks in the end zone untouched. And with 9.50 to go, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's early, but um, that's a confidence killer right there. Jack, as a player, when that happens to you, what do you do? How do you get your confidence back? Move on to Pick the next that up play. real close there. There you go. Got to move up to. Got to move to the next play. Keep got going. Only the first play of the game. Still got whole game left. That's a good point. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna record that and I will yeah, play yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna you. say. I will play it for you when we go to the regional championship here in uh next Sunday. And uh, yeah, yeah. Let me know how that works out. All right. So West Melbourne. Colts will kick off as uh, I tell you, one of the players, obviously, from the young man that just ran the ball back, Cooper Hershey. Uh, you also want to keep your eye on Jace Richardson out there. He's he's uh, he, he's a heck of a player as well. And so, yeah, here we go. We're about to see Melbourne Chargers elite turn here. And there's a onside kick up in the air. It does not it does not go yeah. 10 yards. But that's a good play by the uh, Charger there to come down with because he had the guy from West Melbourne had four inches, five inches on him. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm actually kind of a little bit surprised we didn't see the flag come out for a legal touch. Yeah. Because the West Melbourne uh, player jumped up and touched first. But it doesn't matter. Great field position now. So that's why the kickoff doesn't matter. You had the ball at the 48. And let's see what they got here. All right, here we go. I love the powder blues. One of my favorite NFL uniforms. 9.49 to go. 11 seconds in already. 7 nothing. West Melbourne on top here. Okay. What are they running here, Adam? So you got T2 under center, number zero. Trent Washington, they're going to be in a power. They're gonna, let's see if, how this works uh, running into the probably the biggest defense in 12U. Nice surge and push. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like I like the call, the quick handoff. If you're gonna if you're gonna run that play, it's got it's got to be bang bang. Oh, this is my pet peeve. What? You have your two way quarterback safety running to the sideline to get the play. Yeah, I don't understand that. Just give him a wristband. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I I think we're too far along at every level, at this age group. Not to to have the risk. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying I think it makes it easier for your offense. Not only that, but you're asking your quarterback to run 45 yards every play. Nice run there. Yeah, I think that was Lucas. 
And I know these are young, young, uh, young, young student athletes out here. But here's the numbers here. These are just their IDs. So you want to look here for their numbers. Julian Baxter. Who's that? Number 30. This is yeah, 30, for Baxter. Melbourne. Yep, Julian Baxter. Yep. Good run by him. Good job, Jack. And the quarterback is number zero, and that's uh, Trent Washington. Trent Washington, yep. Yeah, so Trent Washington is a younger brother. He, he goes by T2. T2. And then his, his older brother is an absolute beast of a full player, number four. He's T1. Gotcha. T2 turns around, looks. Back to the fullback. You know, the other reason for this offense, I mean, three, you know, four times three is 12, right? So if you can do that every play, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to do that every play because it's fourth and one. But my point to that is this offense is being run for two reasons. The first reason is, well, you see they're, being effective somewhat through the middle. The second reason, Adam and Jack, is you're keeping that powerful West Melbourne offense off the field. Yeah, I mean, this is somewhat of the strategy we saw a little bit when Titusville played Coco the first time around, right? Try to just kill that clock. They naturally kill the clock with uh, the quarterback running to the sideline to get the play. Yep. Um, and that could be part of it, too. Take your time between plays. Keep that offense. I mean, the best defense you can play is not to have to play it. I uh, I do know that the – I would be shocked if they don't go on two on this play. Try and draw them off here, yeah. No, that yeah. would be uh, that'd be smart. Uh, Corey Durfus, the head coach for the 12U team. Lyle Neighbor, Billy Palmer, Akeem Payne, Danny Russell, Justin Wright. The list goes on, and, of course, that's a who's who of youth football and high school football in Brevard County. And the same with the Melbourne Elite Chargers. Jamar Evans, uh, Coach De De uh, Deterius Allen, D. Allen, uh, Darnell Gray, Raheem Johnson, Ernest Smith. Uh, so we got, a, we, get, we, we got everybody out there, Adam. Here we go. So let's see. I bet you we see that, you know, super power eye. And... Going on two. Let's see if they do, and let's see if West Melbourne is disciplined not to bite here. See the shoulder shake here. I think you're going to see a quarterback sneak. Yep. yep. Did he, he got it. And yeah, T2 is a strong kid, long. Yep. So that's a first down. That's a positive for Melbourne. And it'll be first and ten at the West Melbourne. 36, 37. Jack, what would you call here? What, what, what play you want to see here? They've run the football every play. Is it time for play action on first down? Maybe. If you're going to run it every play, you might want to switch it up a little bit because eventually that defense is going to catch up to the run every single play. Good Spoken like a kid that watched a lot of Coco football. Yes, exactly right. Spread them out, right? Same oh, uh, kickoff return, uh, Rod Lind. Opening kick. Oh. Quick pitch. Good toss. It's a nice head of steam he got there. He yeah, picks up four. Matthew Young, number Three. two. That's T1? Nope, he's four. Okay. Second and seven after and a game. T1's of mother would make him pull that jersey down. Yeah. <laughs> 625 to go in the opening quarter. T smoke. If they throw it, that'll be where they go. Number four, he's split out here is the tight end closest to us. He'll run like a corner route. You got it right now if they run it, because he's definitely taller than the uh oh, oh nice shot in by What a play inside. Number fifty one, I believe that was that came shooting in. Great great initial uh Reed. That was uh, Brady Cleveland on that stop. Yeah, great read. Shot the hole. Yeah, he did. That. I mean, he was in there quick. Already halfway through quarter number one, and I mean, if you're if you're the Melbourne, I know you gave up the uh, you gave up the the you know the big run. Uh, I mean, the big uh, kick return on the first play. But this is the the game you want. You wanted this to be a really yeah. slow game. Protect the ball. 
You know, but you got to do something here where you got to get some yards. Another quick pitch. Toss. He gets the kick out. Good flow by the backers. Gang tackled. But now makes it a very manageable. Well, it's maybe, true. Maybe, uh, maybe the spot on this side isn't as good as the spot on that side. Yeah, he looked a little better on the other side. It's going to be fourth and six. But obvious four down territory here. And, you know, it, it, the back did the right thing there. He did the one cut north plant there. And it, it, the West Melbourne was just there to eat it up at him. Yeah, I mean, met West Melbourne's linebackers flowing over top untouched because their, their D line is so big that. You know, Mel's O line's not even getting close to the second level. And and that's gonna be a factor in the All second half. Spread out here and you got a single high safety. You pick I think we're gonna see a slant to number four down here. Up oh, just a deep ball. But he's gotta be able to get it off. for his life. Oh my ball's out. Recovered by West Melbourne. And he never had a chance on that at all. Ball recovered by Israel, I'm sorry, no, that's uh, Ayer Payne on the recovery. I remember covering. Uh, so, Jack, you know. So, up 7 nothing, got a turnover. You had the momentum. What do you call in here? I think you take a shot. You take a shot. You got the wind. <laughs> you take a shot. Uh, uh, Billy Palmer... Better go vertical right now and take and this. This will be soul crushing. Uh, you take the shot. Think he will? Let's see. Oh, they spread him out here. Here you go. Uh oh. Uh oh. You heard the, the PA guy said, uh oh. That's a sh oh, no. And uh, yeah. well, there you go, Jack. <laughs> That's a good coverage on that. It was good coverage. That was broken up on the play there by uh, Ja'Kai Lakes. Good play. And you, Jack, high five, buddy. Take a shot. They took it. Didn't work out. Want to welcome in Martell Stevens to the broadcast. <laughs> 427 to play here. Super Bowl Saturday. Want to thank Caleb Brown and Jackson and Rob for covering the first three quarters of this day. And this is a handoff. Durfus is the quarterback. I'm pretty sure. Well, that's Melbourne. That was the uh, scratch golfer that threw that first pass. Is that Brady Durfus, the quarterback? Your first play was, I think, a little trickery. Number 22, probably they sat at practice, and Billy said, all right, who throws it the furthest? Jace, Jace Richardson will get in the end zone today. You, you better believe that. The Melbourne, if Jace goes to Melbourne like his brother did, they got a good player coming. Hands off, and there is Jace Richardson. I mean, he's just, you know, he reminds me of, he reminds me of Christian McCafferty. He does. I'm telling you, watching play. And, he's and, a, I mean, he's a, he's a big kid. He moves I'm, really well for his high, high praise, I'm telling you. Water break or timeout, actually, by Melbourne. I, I And I was telling Adam and Jack between games that he's a scratch golfer. He, he shoots par. And he, he beats the Melbourne baseball team on the golf course. <laughs> but I did like the game plan of the Melbourne Chargers on their opening drive there. I want to thank the Brevard Bulls, the 2024 uh, Spring Classic coming up March 23rd and 24th. Three-game guarantee, $350 per team, third through 11th grade. The Brevard Bulls, 24 years of existence in Brevard County. If you're looking for AAU basketball, and you're looking for any AAU sport, the thing that, as a parent, you always want to search for is consistency. Two-plus decades of consistency. Uh, it's pretty good. 3.41 to go here. Ball at the Melbourne 42. A little bit of a bunch formation. Yeah, this is a weird-looking set. What is this, Adam? They're just a bunch formation with a tight end backside. Wildcat. Good Great. pressure right up the... 
That's a good play in there, Jack, by number two for Melbourne. Who is that? Matthew Young, Jr. No, nah, they got a different roster. Maybe I have the wrong roster. You, you sure? You're looking at the, are you looking at the numbers or are you looking at the? Oh, uh, Matthew Young, Jr., okay, yeah. Okay. I'm looking at the, I was looking at West Melbourne. Can I help you? Oh, what's up, man? What's your name? What's your name? Kyler. Who you play for? The Mercenaries. All right. The Melbourne Mercenaries getting a shout out. What position do you play? Another Wildcat, right? Quarterback. All right. There's a run. Look at this run. Mm. What age group are you in, Tyler? 10 you. All right. Well, good luck to you, my man. Tyrese Jefferson got that edge. It's about maybe one block away from screaming down the sideline. Got a, uh, get a guest that comes in every now and then. Uh, me and me and uh, Caleb had a great guest last time. <laughs> Who'd you have? That was her name was Karen, and she came in to yell at the announcer. For what? Uh, we have me and Caleb are still trying to figure it out. But she was going to the board of directors about everything. So was this today? No, no, no. Oh. This was uh, last time we did a broadcast. Oh. Pop Warner championship. Oh. oh. Good strong run up the middle there. Yeah, it was. It's short, though, I believe. It's going to bring up fourth and inches. That's good play by the Melbourne Chargers. Wow, I must have missed this. Okay. Okay. I thought it was a first down. I'm surprised that. Uh... Yeah, it's going to be short. Fourth down and about a foot to go here. If they're maybe asking for a measurement, I will let you know that. They are going to get their measurement. All right, Caleb will zoom in on that. You and zoom uh, in. Let's see how, uh, how Coach Tyrone handles this uh, stick dragging out there today. 2.05 to play in the first, or we just got a timeout. I mean, what are we doing here? I think they're trying to decide if it's a first down now, or a fourth down. Funny had, enough, those sticks actually can move to the middle of the field through this measurement. Right, right, right. And not only can they move, but they can come back. Crazy invention. I wonder who patented that. Well, it looks like they're going to give him a first down. I mean, he's flipped it from four to one. So, no measurement. They say first down. So, it's going to be a first down. And I, if I'm the Melbourne Chargers, I'm not happy about that. I'd ask for the measurement now if I'm Melbourne. Right. Hmm. Yep, we're talking about a car. We ain't got to worry about that. Hands off. Oh, he's got the edge. Great tackle by Washington. I'm not sure why they threw the flag. It's uh, not I a think horse he's collar. He's going to try to say it was a horse collar. But that was not no, a horse a, collar. I think it's going to be a holding coming back. Oh, uh, hold the corner. Okay. The uh, wide receiver had their uh, had their corner on the outside. Okay, so yeah, that's going to be a hold. It'll come back. I was going to say that's not a horse collar. Somebody said, I bet any amount of money Lloyd throw all the flags. Who's Lloyd down there? Where's he at? Uh, I don't know if Lloyd, yep, nope. Lloyd was the earlier game. I don't know if he's in this crew. They take breaks, you know, they rotate. Yeah. I'm trying to see if I see him down there. It's hard from this high. He's here today. He did the uh, tenue game for sure. 140 coming up after the first quarter. We'll get Jack the Give us his uh, take. Look at his speed by Melbourne. Great play. That swarm football. Tackle for loss. All right, Jack, you call this next two plays. All right. Second down, second and 14. He said Lloyd is the head red white hat. Okay. There he is. Uh, 
Great run. Great run. You know what made that a really good run is how he followed his blockers and flowed there. I mean, I'm an old man. I could have made that run. And, and that was so well blocked up. It almost looked like a punt return. It did. How they and, just sealed it. And, and and he did a really good job of, you know, I you know who used to, one of the best I've ever seen at doing that was O.J. Ross. Being able to put his hand on the pad of a, of a, of a blocker and just flow and watch those holes open and cut back into them. That was a great and run. So many RPOs that he stole the football when he wasn't supposed to have it. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Davin, why don't you pull it and throw it? OJ took it. That's a false start there. <laughs> yeah, right. OJ took it. <laughs> I didn't have time to pull it. He just took it and ran. That's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. All right, Jack. So after the opening kickoff there, this has been a pretty good football game. The last time these two teams played, it was 22 to nothing after the first quarter. Jack, what did you see? Well, the score is only 7-0, which means it's still a good ball game. Yep. Uh, Chargers look like they're still in it, still got some motivation, even after their fumble. Yep. Uh, West Melbourne, big, good team, got some good runs, t took some shots. I think it's going to be a good ball game. Well said by young Jack Franco, 12 years old. Yeah, I think they um, they got to get a stop here. Try to try to just keep it close. It's one of those games you want to keep close and try to win late. Yeah, because you never know what can happen, right? Never know. You know, I think I think what's what's ultimately going to happen here, if you just do the eye test on the two sidelines, is West Melbourne looks a little deeper. You know, Billy's been building this team with his staff for quite some time. Right. And and he's had the parents bought in since last year when they were all 11 you you know taking their lumps going 4 and 4. Yeah. Knowing keeping his receipts as he would say uh for this season and uh you know you could just see how it's a well-oiled machine. Yep. But Melbourne's got athletes so first and 15 Like the, I like the defense there. And, and, I, and you know, I, w what I'm starting to see is it's the backside backer that is shooting the gap and making that tackle f from behind because and, and, Melbourne is working up to the play side backer. So the speed and athleticism of, of Melbourne's linebackers is, is what's helping them here. Yeah. Yeah, because speed has definitely been a factor for them defensively here. Because it really hasn't been much of a pass start. Look at the safeties now. There's not, there's no. no one deeper than five yards. And then you get a run like that, and that can be deflating. Straight up the gut, Chase Richardson there. And, well, you know when they're going to throw the ball because they don't use Durfus to do it. At least the deep routes anyway. Mm-hmm. Nine minutes to play in the first half. Just seven to nothing. The opening kick was run back 70 yards for a touchdown. And this is where we are. Still don't see any. What's it? i got to look up that Florida State-Miami score. That's got to be getting close Good to the end. Good run right there. Almost got, the, almost got the ball out. And that's the other thing you really got to start preaching to get down here when, they, when they're when they just going to pound the rock. And it is first and goal to go inside the Brevard Bulls basketball red zone. Let's see here. Florida State. 20 to 13. Uh-oh, it's a game. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Miss Skeen. Pop Jones watching. We'll say hello to Pop. Go. Big number 70 got in there that time, Adam. That was the DT. Who was that, Jack, for uh, Melbourne? I don't see a 70 on the roster. I don't see a 70 on the roster either. No, I don't have. Oh, wait a minute. There is a second page to this roster, so let's flip it over and see here. That is uh, Michael Vincent. Nice job by Mr. Oh, Vincent. Yep, Michael played. Uh, he played O line for us last year too. Real, I mean, <laughs> very, very big kid. Yes. You can just tell when you see him that he is going to end up being six seven. 
Yeah. And and he's fast. No, actually he's playing DN. See him standing up over here? Near side. This is second and goal. Here comes that toss outside. This is speed. Oh, it's holding really there. bad holding there. Yep, and Tyrone. Did he throw no. the flag? Yeah, definitely threw the flag. Yeah, that I mean, was a hold. That was, that was they, good. they tackled the corner on that one. That was a good call. I'm going to tell those refs throw those flags a little lower for the, you know, these kids. Yeah, he absolutely reels. tackled him. Yeah. We're 30 seconds behind on the replay, and I saw the replay there. It's a good call by Tyrone. Want to say hello to CFAT on here. Congratulations, CFAT. As I don't know if you're aware of this, but the O'Galley Commodores put 66 points on Merritt Island yesterday. And Michael Lowe, that's right, the same Michael Lowe on the beach, let us know that that's only the third time ever Merritt Island has had 60 points or more scored on them. 6.55 to go. He and surfaced the throw. He's got his man up. Oh. oh, caught. Nice throw. Good catch. But just short of the end zone there. That ball hauled in by Edmund McLean Jr. Uh, Marquez Young wants that one back. The safety came over. He played it perfect. And he jumps about a half a second early. Where if he times his jump a little better he's probably in the in their end zone and we're looking at a seven seven game right now see fat says uh tighten up d allen <laughs> it's spaces in the comments <laughs> 618 to go here third and goal comes up turns gives oh my goodness gracious i believe that is is that jace I believe that's Jace Richardson who just bowled him over there for a touchdown. Yeah, it was Jace. Yeah, he just lowered his shoulder and just dropped the bomb. And with 6.07 to go, I mean, I don't know what more you could do there, uh, Adam, to stop that unit. I mean, that wasn't a fluid drive, and they still get into the end zone. Yeah, I mean, you had it. You know, you had him at a long, long distance they had to go. And uh, they, throw, they, they float a pass. He just, just missed it by about a half an inch. And that's the difference between, uh, between the game right now. 6 7 14 to nothing. And I, we're going to need to have also a conversation about those, um, those truck horns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are... Uh, all I can say is that I love the West Melbourne Youth Football Program, but I'm glad that they're on that side of the field with all those truck horns. So I think if you're Melbourne Chargers, this is definitely not a panic moment. You know, they got ball first. You know, you're down you're down 14 nothing. Go go march down the field here and score. You know, you get ball at uh you get ball at halftime. But you got to you got to you got to first recover this onside kick. Which yes. is the craziest part of youth football. Now. Is that they make them kick from the 40, and no one could really kick that this, far. This is the perfect time for me to tell my story of Hot Mike speaking of onside kick. So I'll take you back to last year's Super Bowl after this onside kick because we know it's coming. So anyway, the ball blows off the tee. So last year I was frustrated because they were playing Vero in this game, and they kept onside kicking the football. And Vero, they didn't that time, but he kicked it out of bounds. No, it stays in. That might be dangerous that it stays in. Oh, he's about to. So, so I, it, it ended up at halftime that West Melbourne was trailing. And the big reason they were trailing was because of these onside kicks. And I was frustrated. So, at halftime, as soon as we go to half, I immediately light up the coaches. Man, they got to stop doing this, you know. But I'm not as polite now as i'm saying it and i'm using a few choice words so caleb and i look at the broadcast and it says hot mic hot mic hot mic hot mic well let's just say that um everything i said was on that broadcast so obviously i called the coaches and texted the coaches and apologized the next day and they got a kick out of it because they west melbourne actually came back to win the game in the second half because of the onside kicks so there you have it. There was my hot mic lesson. 
6.02 to play in the third. 14 to nothing. And mm -hmm. now so spread I, it out. Shotgun I don't know. I, would, I don't know. I would spread it out this early. I get oh, it's 14 yeah, nothing. There's the pass. Oh, oh my goodness. Hits his brother right in the chest. Jack, what happened there, buddy? T2, Trent Washington threw the ball to his brother, Tristan Washington. T1. Just dropped right, it. Hit him right in the chest, dropped it. Bounced right off his chest, didn't it? That's why catch with, gotta catch with your hands. But I mean it's a good post route. Came under the safety, knew not to keep it steep. You know, he throws a, he delivers the ball, throws a strike. He catches that, he's in the end zone right now. Yeah, he's gone. Because he's got too much speed. Who's behind me? Come on in, man. What are you doing? Well, have a seat. Hey, Jack throws a flat. Can you let immediately Mr. Steven borrow your headset here? My man. What's going on, man? I, 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 you tell me. Let's welcome in Mr. Stephen Hughes and Coach. Uh, first of all, um, congratulations on a great season, not just youth-wise, but nice win last night too, by the way. Good win. Talk to me a little bit. Um, I, I, you know, we've been talking about the Brevard Bulls, and the thing that impresses me the most about the Brevard Bulls is this. 24 years. A I always say AAU, when you see a league start up, generally it's because one parent isn't happy and then it becomes daddy ball. And I don't like that. But you've been established for 24 years. How have you been able to maintain this program for 24 years? Not you, but, I, you know, yeah, the program. I yeah, I got you. Um, I mean, it starts with parents. Yeah. It starts with coaches. Yeah. Um, having good coaches. Um, and, uh, and you also have to go, have good players. Right. So we've had a um, pretty good run before. Of recycling good players, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of support. You know, I can't it narrow it down on one thing, but it's been a lot. You know, a lot of factors into running uh, two, a program for twenty-four years. Two plus decades is a very, very long time yep. um, for for an AAU program. Because again, we see them start up all the time. And then here's the other thing: you got some events coming up, some open gyms. Talk a little bit about these open gyms coming up, because you know, I, I mean, look. Coach, the one thing that's really just is terrible for me at my age now is how fast time is going. So December is going to be here in the blink of an eye. Right, right. Yep. So we got our, um, our open gym starting in December. Um, hopefully, mo most of our kids are two sport athletes, so we want them to kind of, especially with the parents, we we're not big on the year round year round stuff. So give the parents a little time to reset, you know, because a you can get expensive. I'm pretty sure Franco knows that. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, what a catch. Oh, my What goodness. a catch. And oh, that man. is the horse collar that they missed. There they go. They throw the flag. Now, let's go, you got to give it to T2. Number zero just stood in the pocket, took an absolute oh, shot, yeah, and yeah. delivered that ball. Matthew so Young Jr. on that catch. That wasn't out. That's going to be 15 more, so it's going to be first and 10 at the 35-yard line coming up. And the information for the Brevard Bulls has been on the bottom of the screen there. And what's the best way? The, you know, because social media, there's you, you guys do all the social media, but what is the, the most effective way to really, if somebody wanted to really get in touch immediately, how would that happen? Um, it depends on who's trying to reach out. Most uh, most of the kids reach out through Instagram. Right. Uh, most parents reach out through Facebook. Okay. So, I mean, either uh, probably the best way is probably Instagram or, or text. You know, we don't really – you know, we're not as active. Oh, he breaks the tackle. Oh, there we go. There we go. There Look we go. Look at that. There nice job. There we go. This would be a huge touchdown if they can get this in before the half with 422. Now, we're going to play a game at halftime, aren't yes, we, Coach? Yes, yes, and I'm excited. I sent it to uh, Caleb. Yes, he would I not. Think, I, he I, wouldn't show it to I me. Think, and I think Franco needs to get in on this, Oh, I'm, you know I love a good game. <laughs> you know I love a good game. You're going you're gonna to see some familiar faces, man, and it'll show uh, kind of what we've meant to the community over the years. And it's not, it's not to – brag on what we've done but it's to kind of brag on that a lot of the top athletes that you see nowadays have trusted us for years to you know kind of develop trying it. to suck me into this game gonna be an yeah well i'm gonna violation. need your help and that ball is out and oh. melbourne's got it back i'm gonna need your help because caleb I, I i said to him last night right i said hey did you get the video from coach on the, he's like yes i did and no you're not seeing it yeah <laughs> i'm interested to know if caleb looked at it and if, if he noticed some of the athletes on there you know he would not 
And I and I just looked at him like, really? He's like, no, you're not seeing it. I was yeah. like, all right, all right. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a good one, man. You'll kind of get the get a behind-the-scenes look of how we excited. I'm excited, I'm excited for this. Yeah. And then uh, tomorrow, after all the football is over, check on Facebook tomorrow. I'm going to – uh, we'll put the video up tomorrow, put a little music behind it, and a nice little post uh, for uh, Brevard Bulls basketball. And they'll be with us the rest of the month through the, uh, the high school football playoffs and uh, into the month of January. We've got uh, some good stuff coming up here. And uh, I, I absolutely love uh, this program. I, you know, obviously, Brevard Sports Network, we don't attach ourselves to just any program. We don't just take anything and – you know, I've done my due diligence, and this is an outstanding program. It really, truly is. Yeah, man, just to go on uh, some of the the open dates, um, we got them coming in uh, in December, starting in December, get the parents a break. Um, and yeah. we just wanted to make sure we hit every area because there's a lot of teams around here that only kind of get grab kids from certain areas. So we want to make sure we get from Palm oh, Bay. This to is a touchdown. Palm Bay to Titusville, and we also may be reaching out to uh, the Vero mm-hmm. area. Now it's okay. Time. Where do you see this touchdown well, at, Adam? if he would have just kept him on the other side, he had the seam wide open. Come on, Franco. This ain't Coco Hosco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to you on a halftime. Oh, that's a good run. There you go. That's a good run. That's that's great a- job by uh, Washington. Leaves himself about a yard on fourth down to get. Yeah, I mean, but this, is, this has been their struggle tonight, right? I mean, short yardage situations. Uh, we've seen uh, we've seen a turnover and a stop, and I, th- so, I think that's going to be their best bet trying to run the ball is yep. trying to spread these guys out, man, because the, they're big up front. That and, power you know, eye. I don't think you're going to be able to get in the wishbone and run it down their throats. No, I mean T two is one of their best athletes. I mean they spread it out and just let them run. Right. You right. got two offensive guys here. I'm going to let them have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let them have it. I like to run a little bit more than Franco. So, <laughs> you know, if you want to talk about running the ball, just lean, lean on me. If you want to throw it, Franco's the guy. Oh, my uh, goodness gracious. Exactly what I said. You Can't called it, Coach. Middle, coach, you called it right there. At Coco, we're going – we're probably five wide calling Hitch. Yep. We'll find somebody. Yep. What, are you, what, are you, what are you doing What are you doing six miles north? What? Uh, no, I'm actually in uh, at Rockledge. Rockledge. That's what yeah, I said. Yeah, yeah. Six miles north of Coco. Oh, okay. Yeah, what are you yeah, doing yeah. six yeah, miles just, north? Uh, I'm not the offense coordinator, but I just kind of help out. I you know, got I you. Had to take a step back uh, this year because had a newborn in August. Right, oh, my right goodness. Right at the end of the season. So, you know, I, I got you. couldn't put in the hours it took to but, be but, an offense coordinator. But I tell you what, you did a heck of a job down there, you and Hunter Turner down oh, there yeah, in Melbourne, absolutely. man. I, that's my guy. And he hopefully the next year. At Georgia Southern will be – he'll get a chance to walk on and earn a scholarship. But. Yeah, I heard he's working in, like, uh, the like doing something with NIL or recruiting, like, as a GA. Yeah, he's actually in the cool. recruiting program now. Oh. oh, there we go. Yeah, he's actually in the recruiting pro- program, like a GA type deal, um, just to be around it. Um, and then he'll be hitting the field in the spring, you know, and hopefully he stays focused. If you know Hunter, he's a good-looking guy, so – yeah, he, he can pull focused. it in. Yeah. I said north. I meant south, six miles south. <laughs> I got Rockley's and Coco mixed up. But um, uh, I, he was one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch play and progress and grow up, Coach. And uh, you guys did a, a terrific job there together. And it, that offense was a lot of fun to watch. It really yeah. was. And, and it, was a, it was a struggle trying to keep Brady off the field, man, because, you know, he's just as talented. It's oh, yeah. And, I mean, I, there's a lot of times I told him last year, and Hunter knew it, actually, that he could be the starting quarterback. Yeah. You know? But, he, you know, he sat back, learned a lot. I, th- I feel like he learned a lot, and, you know, he's taking it by storm this year. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's interesting to watch. That's right. A lot of people, you had both of those guys. <laughs> My goodness gracious. Talk about being able to have two quarterbacks of riches there on yeah, the sidelines. Absolutely. 114 to go here. Now, a lot of people might say that West Melbourne, the Colts here, are going to be running this clock out. Don't you bet on it. They're going to try and break one here. Well, there's Durfus. a pass. Look at that wide open call. Oh, he oh, dropped it. Dropped it. Dur- well, let me say this. Durfus underthrew the ball, but 
He tried to run with it before he had it. And that, that's just youth football. You get that. So that's going to bring up fourth down, guys. It, it seems like uh, West Melbourne was, was watching film a little bit because mm-hmm. Coco last week could have scored on that exact same play like three times. So yeah, I don't know if it was recorded last week, but it, I think that was a scout, you know, a scout play right there. Oh, you know they had somebody there. Yeah. So the Chargers, I got to be, I'm impressed, guys, with this first half by the Chargers. I listen. I know West Melbourne. No oh, fumble. Yeah, that's a fumble, and that's going to be Oof. a turnover oh, on yeah. downs. Oh yeah. They got a shot here. I mean, this is a huge moment in the game. D. Allen, your best three plays. Let's go. 58 seconds. Where's Get the he score. At I don't see him. He's right there with the red, uh, the blue shoes and the. Red oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, his, okay, his, okay. Uh, I see him. All right. He's into it right now. He's oh, telling yeah. them, yeah. let's go. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is a – you're right, Adam. This is a – I mean, you, is change, you change your entire halftime, right? And you're getting the ball. You're getting the ball at yeah, halftime. That's right. So you're, 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 you could go be 14-7 with the ball at half, after coming out of the half with a chance to, to tie it up and let's see what happens. Go back to this. This is the, the formation I thought they should have thrown out of. And that's it right Uh-oh. There. They got to be toss. Got to be toss. You got to go down, too. You can't fight this because you don't have much time here. So if you know your stop, go down. I'm waiting to see number four slip out. That's the, that's the make up for his uh, drop across the too middle. Too much time, too much time, too much time. Uh, Do they have any timeouts? Yeah, I think they got one, and this this is oh, man. this is catastrophic Still right here. They got to take a oh, timeout. Ben called a timeout. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, here's the whole thing, and this is where I kind of I kind of blame the 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 ref crew, and I'm not attacking the refs, but the player was injured out of the player box. Right. The referee should have called timeout. Right. No, That's I what agree. caused the interruption, and they did, why the per, the personnel they were in the same formation. So it's like, wait, why are they in the same formation and they're not get, being able to get they're they're running kids in and out? It's because there was an injured player out of the player box, which is, <laughs> you know, Lloyd's all over it. <laughs> no, you, and, and 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 to be clear, nobody on that Coco staff would ever criticize the referees, right? No, no, never. <laughs> <laughs> Nineteen. Point nine seconds to go here. Fourteen and up in West Melbourne. We'll play a game. Stay tuned. Coming up at halftime, we're going to play a game. Guess the face. I'm excited two. about this. Second down and seven here. Down and distance doesn't matter. It's the time they're up against. They don't have time to run two plays, so it doesn't matter if it's second down. Uh, that, that should be a penalty. Yeah, it should mm-hmm. be. That's illegal substitution. <laughs> That's one way to get him in the right formation. He's got to get set, though. Got to get it rid of Uh-oh. that ball. Might call. Could have called pass interference on that. Twelve Good and a no half. Call. Yeah, I hear you on that, but I don't know if they're going to say that ball was catchable or not. Yeah, that's why I think it's a good no yeah. call. You know, that, that he was he was throwing that ball away, and you'll see referees throw that flag when the reality was is you know and that Melbourne, was just good coverage. And Melbourne Melbourne coaches got to show some composure. Yeah, because the, especially this young man, the kids will feed off of that and yeah, go to no. panic in themselves. I, they in the, when they're in that 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 power eye set and they got number four at the tight end. There's he's no he's one over there one-on-one. Watching him. One, watch him. Let's see what happens now in doubles. I mean, they're throwing a post to four. Yeah, they're going to throw it up to him. At, uh, he's got to get rid of it quick. Catch and throw. He's looking wide now. side. There's the oh, 10. There he's got a he's chance. Oh. Oh, almost. It's all right. Take it's a good shot coverage. at the end zone. You get one more shot at it. That's a good play. And he got rid of it quickly. How, what do you teach your you guys, you know, what do you tell your quarterbacks when you know you're under pressure? What do you, what do you, what do you tell them? Is it the clock in the head? What do, you, what do you tell them? Well, I mean, I don't know about Franco, but here, I mean, it, it should have been rock and cop. 
getting the ball out. And a lot of times you want to, especially when you get pressure, you want to throw into the pressure because that's usually where the boy is at. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you but, these situations, it's it's you're deciding what side of the field you're going to work. You know your read, drop step, shoot it. That's all you can do at that point. And you got to just you got to have confidence your receiver is going to win his one on one. He's got there to his brother. He can catch this. I've seen him catch it a thousand times. That's a touchdown. There you go. That's a touchdown. I've seen that all last spring in seven on seven and all season. And it's a huge momentum changing. No time in the half. Points Dude. off turnovers, gentlemen. Younger brother to older brother connection right there, which I just find so cool. T I never got to play with my brother like that. Yeah. T1 up. to T2. And if I'm not mistaken, one of them has been injured all season. I want to say the quarterback, uh, I think he broke his wrist earlier in the season. That's right. That's they got right. him back a couple weeks ago, and you can tell, you know, it, the connection's there, man. They've been throwing it up to four. My daughter cheers for two of you, so I've been following this team. All year, and Ford's been making plays like that all year. Yeah, I mean, how many times do you think they, on their block, have just thrown that pass to each other? Yeah. Trent yeah. to Tristan. <laughs> what a play. T1 to T2. Yeah, I, I didn't have a chance. So, but with no time left, Caleb will get the scoreboard here. It's halftime, and that is correct. That is a huge play. Gentlemen, we got us a game moving into the second half here uh, as the Melbourne Chargers have done something here that they did not do in that regular season game, and that's score. And they are only down by eight here as Caleb gets uh, us ready. We're going to play this game coming up here. Now, uh, Adam, you want to come over here? Yeah. And uh watch on my iPad. So so the pictures are going to be only uh, – the pictures are going to be – Okay. The pictures are, wow, are there, 10 man. seconds long, so I don't know if. All you, right. Well, I'm going to need probably. Can pause the video. Uh, no, no, but I'm probably going to need 30 seconds. Yeah. And we can run it twice. So you can let run it once. Let me look at it and then run it twice. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to guess who this person is. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. the first two are going to be a little get, bit hard. Get rid of the bottom yep. banner. Yep. All right. All right. Ready when you are. All right, here we go. Is that the right video? Yep, that's it. Okay. That's it. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, that. Oh, my God. Chime in if you know. That's a, that's a good one, man. Oh, um. No. <laughs> that is a real good yeah, one. The first one I'm, I, I'm racking my brain on right now. I don't know any of them. I, I can't put any of these kids' faces together. One I think I know. Yeah, you'll start getting some familiar faces right here. That one's a little grainy, but. Yeah. That's actually me all the way to the left. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That was a little At grainy. At the Allen right there? No. no. I don't know. I don't know. I thought I saw Darius Tennyson in there. Y'all know that face. That's a, that's a Corbin face. Yes, yes it is. is. Jason Corbin. Corbin. <laughs> that's a smile you never forget. <laughs> Y'all know that face. Who is that? You know it. When you tell me, I'm going to be. Um, you know that face, Franco. No. Oh, that's 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 the Nicky Teeter right that there. Is that Nicky Teeter? Teeter? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's been with us since, like, second grade. All of these young men He probably played. thinks he could dunk. Y'all know that face. For Brevard? Uh, it's Ed Hawkins. Yep. Yeah. Ohio State. I was thinking too old, I think. No, that's, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. I, I was thinking, like, like old. No, no. Nah, nah. Okay. You know the, the oh, that's Amari Robinson. Yeah. Oh, who's bottom one? Played for Melbourne basketball last year. Mm. Best player in the county. <sighs> oh, is that? That's not Sedaris. No. No, I remember that. I mean, y'all making it harder than what it is. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm overthinking this. Yeah. Is that, that's not Willie. It no. is Willie. That is, is that Willie Gaines? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Yep, yep. Willie, Willie, Gaines Gaines. Actually, Gaines. Actually, Willie Gaines is actually a pretty good basketball yep. player. Uh, that's uh, Zamari Walton. That is. He's Zamari. at uh, Ole Miss right now. Ole Miss, yep. Got a big game today. Mm -hmm. Zamari. You know the one to that the like right. That's like a small Zamari. Oh. Yep, yeah, that is Zamari, but the one to the left. This is fun. You know those two. 
I can't see this guy. Who's that guy? Well, don't tell me. We're going to go back. Yeah, we're going to go back to yeah, it, yeah. and I'll give you the answers. Yeah. And this was actually for you, Alan. I know you're a, a Baltimore's fan. It's hard to see, but. Yeah, I can't see that one. I'm going to give it to you uh, once we go back to it, right. and you'll be like, wow. And I think that's the last that's a, All right, Caleb, that's run that right. thing go back. Because yeah. now I, I want. Man, that first one's rocking my brain. So, I'm going to so be so mad on that first one. Do y'all need another try or? No, uh, no, no, no. no. Okay. You, you I'm, I'm going to give you about five seconds, yeah. and then I'll, uh, mm -hmm. I'll tell Did you. That, I, I'm pretty sure I saw Big Rich in there, didn't I? Man, this one's that's rocking my brain. one of the Brevard legends. That's Chevelle Bowie. Oh, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Chevelle Bowie, man. I've known that kid for a long time. Man. This is another one of the basketball wins. Um, that Cormick? No, that's uh, Devontae Jordan. No. Okay, that's I a, wouldn't have got Devontae. Yeah. He went to Buffalo, though. Yep, yep. the top win uh, here is going to be Dorian Josie. Okay. TJ Jordan. Oh, look yeah. at Dorian. Yep, yep. Man, that kid could dunk. This one's going to be easy. Who is it? That is Marcus May. Is it really? Is Marcus May right there, man. We used to call him Peanut. Reading a He's com small that a comic there. book showing yeah. your age? <laughs> Right here, that's uh, that's Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Oh, oh, is it? That is. Well, you don't look the same no more. Yeah. <laughs> you Jay got that Sean, right. That's, right. that's, that's, that's small. Yep. Who's that? That's a good question. Now is this that one, this is Raheem Sanders right here. Oh my that God! Is no, uh, right is hey, it? my favorite thing about Raheem Sanders <laughs> is he played slot receiver Look at, at Rockwood, leading the SEC in rushing. Nikki Teeter, I didn't ever guess that was Raheem. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know the rest of those. Yeah, guys. you got that one, Seth yeah. Hawkins. Him and Jamari played. Said just the years, just that, you know. They Look at him and Jamari. Look at little Jamari. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jamari is balling him as I say right now. And this is not that long ago. Who was the young man on top? That's, That's Jamari. Jamari. Okay. And then you got Carlin Jellin uh, from. Oh, from Carlin Jellin. Jellin's put on some weight oh, and yeah. from that picture. That right there is uh, James Blackstrain. Okay. Oh, Holy, Holy Trinity. Trinity receiver. That's yep. right. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yep. Where's he now? Did he end up going to Georgia Tech? Georgia Tech, yep. Okay. Yeah, we got Willie, Willie who Gaines. else in this picture with Willie? Willie. I don't know anybody else on that one. That is wild, man. We got that There's one. Mario yeah. Mario. Yep. 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 You got Tay Cobb in that picture yep. uh, from MCC. Wow. Man, you guys have a story to love. The one to the left. You got the one to the right. That's mm -hmm. Jamari. The one to the left is Ryan Black. Okay. Holy Trinity. Yep. Or no. Um, Rockledge. 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 Yep. That's Big Rich and Richard Leonard. I thought that was Big Rich. <laughs> I thought that was Big, Big Rich. Rich and Richard Leonard. Damn. <laughs> I was hey, like, that's Big let, Rich. I whoever Richie Leonard's dating, if he if she no, wants to know it, no, he's going to look right, like who, in a few years. Now, I put this one on there for you, all right? And you might hate him, but that's Nelson Aguilar. I love Nelson. Yeah, he obviously uh, can help well, hang I mean, on he, the ball. He, he dropped some passes. Yeah. I, didn't know he was, I didn't know he was a Brevard guy. No, he's not a Brevard oh, guy, but that was uh, – You were just recruiting yeah, international. Actually, we didn't have to recruit. We were one of – uh, this team right here, we were one of the uh, – and actually Marcus May and uh, Shaquille Ferry and Fabian Upshaw and that TJ is, Simon. Uh, Fabian actually is with the Broncos as an assistant coach right now. You put uh, some time – into that, man. Yeah, I thought about you when I put You this. put some time. I mean, that's just, that. that's just impressive. Hey, we're going to show this video. Absolutely. And yeah. not even that. The, the, you know, the other crazy part about it is that we called out almost all football players. Right. Yeah. Right? right? And it's like all these parents that are just sucked into this year round. Like he said, like, we don't right. want you to be year round. Right. I said it earlier when uh, Michael Benson caught that ball. Looked like he was going up for a rebound. You've right. got to keep your kids in mobile sports. Right. And I kept that when I made the video, I kept that in mind. Um, I, a lot of, I left a lot of basketball players like Ralph Williams, who was probably one of the best, uh, Justin Jackson, Corbin Jackson. Yeah, uh, those, yeah. You know, Devontae went on to play in the next level. Uh, there, there's a lot that we've had. I'm upset fortunate. that I got big rich and didn't get little rich. How awesome uh, Richie Leonard, you know, yeah. was a captain twice this year already, you yeah. know, starting on the offensive line of Florida. And then and – then, you're watching the highlights, and then who is in the sideline? Jay Nitschcombe. I know. I know. Walked right on. Yep. All right. Jay I'm Nitschcombe gonna, did a real walk on. I'm going to step out. Uh, you want this? I'm going to be gone for about 
10 minutes. All right, I'm going to step aside. Uh, Coach Hughes, Coach Franco, and either Jack or Caleb will bring you back to start what is going to be a really good second half here. And welcome back here live to uh, D.C. Roofing Stadium. 12U Super Bowl. I will get that scoreboard changed uh, in between plays. It is the third quarter of 12U Super Bowl. Adam Franco and Jack Franco here with you. Oh, and a little pooch kick. Not the kid you want to kick it to. Nope. Oh, and he makes a break. He's going to go. He's going. He's got one to beat. He's Touchdown. got one to beat, Touchdown. and they return the favor Touchdown. to start the half. As soon as I saw the kick, I knew that's not who you kicked the football to. Touchdown, Melbourne Chargers. That was number... I believe that was number 10, right? Number 10, number 2. We're, we're, we're good. Uh, if you want to stay on and jump on with them, you can. All right. Hold up. Matter of fact, we can do this here. I have a fourth headset. Touchdown number 12. Number 12. Marquez Young. Marquez Young with a beautiful opening kickoff to start the second half. Well, I mean, that. That's. That's pretty impressive. And basically, the span of. Let's see, seven seconds and a half when they throw the bomb, and that took 13 seconds. You know, in a span of 20 seconds, this game went from 14 nothing to 14-12. Um, I mean, you can't ask if, maybe if you're if you're, if you're Melbourne Chargers. That, that's a spark you want coming out of halftime. And now you have West Melbourne. I don't want to call it Chuck, but you definitely have them now in a game, and they haven't really been in a game. Yeah, uh, they've, uh, they've curb stomped everybody all year, all year. And, and I think Melbourne kind of got through the rough part, you know, when they played in the regular season, you know, West Melbourne jumped on them quick and it uh, was over by the first quarter. So. I mean, you could say yeah. one of the reasons why Rockledge beats Jensen Beach last night is that you had to do it against Osceola. Right, right. right. Actually, against uh, Trinity Christian. That's what Trinity Christian, Trinity Christian over time. Yeah, you, you were there, right, you know, yeah. and, and that's why you. Take your lumps and play the play the schedule you people play. Absolutely, we were put in that same situation earlier in the season, and it, it benefited last night. 
and now there seems to be a mass confusion. Uh, the, the refs just stand over the ball, I think. Uh, They'll get a sideline warning. Yep. Sideline warning. Might, that might be their, sec their second one. Oh, oh, wow. Somebody's just been thrown out. Yeah, it's a nine coach, though. It's a. It's a parent. Uh, oh, wait, actually. Uh, look, uh, I'll say this. L Lloyd don't take none. Lloyd almost threw me out when I was uh, <laughs> when he refed our game, uh, youth football. There's a snap. Gives it the last back through. Ah, uh, short. I kind of want to see that same thing where he then rolls out and mm -hmm. he's got a tight end coming across. But with 9.47 left to go here in the third quarter, the Chargers, ha they've started to make West Melbourne really think. Like they're thinking like, wait a minute. I don't know how many times this year West Melbourne's had to even make an adjustment. <laughs> I, I mean, mean, they've been able to just turn around and hand the ball to the one of the three biggest kids in the county in 12U. And the way that their Chargers defense is swarming right now, are you going to put the ball in the air? You had a couple opportunities to – you had guys screaming wide open. You just didn't connect. That's not really the type of team that they want to be. But, you know, it's also – this isn't West Melbourne's first season. This is a good staff. They might calm the kids down and just reset the script. And I, and I will watch out for the onside kick. I think the momentum's in Melbourne Chargers' direction right now, so I would take that opportunity. Well, maybe not if it's a penalty. Oof. Oh, that's rough. It had to be a coach. I don't know that they would have assessed a 15-yard on a parent ejection, but I don't even know. I mean, none of the none of the coaches came off. He did eject them, right? I I, I mean, I saw. Yeah, yeah. I seen something mm -hmm. too like that, but uh, I don't think none of the coaches. The only person I I, I saw someone leave a West Melbourne sideline. Yeah, but they wouldn't have been back. Right. This is tough, you know, because yeah, you're gonna eat. You. Oh. Oh 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 oh. oh. Oh, 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 oh. And West oh. Melbourne might have just Mel got Melbourne that ball. Got Melbourne got it. Melbourne got it. Melbourne's ball. Oh. 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 Man. That was a close one. I think at this age group, you don't have no choice but the onside kick. I mean, there's no Gunner Trouts out there. <laughs> I can kick it into the back of the end zone every play. I see. Norris is Jones' is, uh, mom. I see her down there. She is the uh, team mom, and she has now self-inserted as the get-back coach. <laughs> and uh, what was going to be another sideline penalty, she single-handedly just prevented if you were watching that sideline. <laughs> Martell, yes, that is, uh, that is Co Coach Hughes joining the broadcast. Oh, Lord. Martell oh, here Steve we go. We're going. And here's the run up the middle. And... <laughs> Great tackle. I think that was one of the twins, the Lucas twins. Number, Can't really see the num number. I thought it was here. number two. Okay, Matthew Young then on the uh, on the tackle there. Yeah, Oliver and Isaiah are 19, 22. They're double digits. Yeah. That was definitely a single digit. If you want, uh, binoculars will help. Okay. Big number 22 lined up his fullback. There it is. Hand off. Makes him jump cut. He gets the edge. You got to make sure you wrap that kid up, man, because if he gets going, you know, it could be a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, even, even stringing that out to the sideline, making him jump cut and not be able to go downhill, he's still got about four yards. This is two down territory for sure. Folks, don't worry, you won't miss any of the action, but uh, getting the scoreboard corrected. Here we go. And here's another handoff to number 22. Downhill yeah. runner. All right. hitting, him, hitting him pretty high. I mean, that's, you're, not, you're not, gonna, not gonna be able to tackle that kid high. And 
They're getting a nice push off the right side of the line. That's probably the stronger part of their line right now. And 22 is going to try to assert his will right now. Gentlemen, I was out taking a break. That looked like a uh, NFL kickoff return the way he hit that seam. It was gone. Some have said in the comments they thought it was an NFL announcing call. Did they? Yes. Well, that's what matters the most. That, I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's that's truly what the matter, you know, that's important there. This is Jace Richardson. Oh, man, he's a low. So. This is a little bit of a feed the beast moment here. And who's going to rise up to the occasion? Co Coach, I, did you know his brother at Melbourne? Jace's brother? I did not. I okay. Did not. I was only there for, you know, three years. Right. So I didn't um, – I think he was there, Richardson. I think he was a baseball player. Yeah, he was there. a baseball player. So I may actually, I may have. I think he was there um, one of the years I was there. I don't know if he played football. But no, I, I don't think he I did. Know he was a, yeah. He's saying going to go he 22 again. Let's see where they hand this one. Yep, 22 on the block, and you got fresh pair of legs. And look at the difference in a fresh set of legs now. Look at Franco over here doing Jim Nance. I love it. Yeah. Uh oh, Martell and uh, Miss Felix are in the comments. What Martell say? <laughs> he said, "What Martell say?" Tell him don't celebrate yet. Do we get a spaces tonight after this? No, after I, this? I think he stays away from it on Saturday. I got you. If Billy lose, it might be. A it spaces, might be a spaces. Yeah. Oh, if Billy loses, it's going to be a space. Yeah, definitely. Especially it's going to be a sermon. Or with D. Allen and uh, Billy. <laughs> yeah. It will be oh, a sermon. Oh, on. my God. We're going to have to mute D. Allen the whole dang night. <laughs> Martell said Billy got to coach this up. That's kind of what uh, what Franco was saying, man. It's the first game they played in all year. Everything's been about 20. It'll, it'll be interesting. I mean, you know, 22 looked, uh, you know, he looked, he got four straight handoffs. Anyone's going to be tired after that. What happens after this drive when all these kids go right back and try to play defense? Toss a ooh. Great. That's a great job. Great job. Great what a, great there stop. you go. Great job setting the edge by number two. Oh, we found you a headset too? You brought four headsets today? Caleb, uh, did I tell you? Well, I must have told you while I was half asleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. After Friday night football, I could tell you anything. The fact that you listened to me is, is the incredible part. Well, I, I well, you value, I value the paycheck too. <laughs> Third down and go. eight. Third and eight. I mean, I'm gonna go out on a limb. Probably gonna hand it number twenty-two, or it's gonna be play action. Uh, it looks like up oh, uh, false start. It's going to twenty-two. False start. That's Third. a huge penalty. Third and thirteen here. Big play. What do you run here, Jack? What are you running? So it's third and thirteen. Yeah. Well. You gonna throw the ball here? Or you gonna run it? Try to run it again. You have to throw it, really, unless you can get like a really good run. I think you gotta throw it. I think right now their rushing attack is good for about ten or twelve yards a clip on a big play. They can break it at any time, but I agree with you, Jack. I think they need to throw you, the football. If you run, yeah, if you run it here, you're dedicating to you're going back to back runs. Yeah. But I think oh, oh, great. oh that was great. Forced him back inside. He's out of bounds at about the inch yard line. Still a first down, though. Yep. First and goal inside the Brevard Bulls basketball red zone now. I mean, that was a great play call because if he hands it to 22, it, it he's stuffed immediately. That's almost like a run what I, what you would call a run because they kind of let the don't guys through a, there. Don't you start a run run option? <laughs> we don't want no RROs. Okay, don't even bring that into football, please. What you're going to see here is the Billy Palmer special. Have your quarterback get under center and push forward for The tush push, which no, I still am not Hand told. the ball to 22 no, or 20. Yep. Touchdown. There you go. Jace Richardson. Melbourne, control your emotions. It wasn't like West Melbourne wasn't going to score again. This next play is critical. You have to get this stop. You don't want them to get this conversion. No, you don't because, yeah, it comes nine points. Mm -hmm. And what would Pop say? 
Tech got Tiger in him, knowing, of course, he is throwing. <laughs> Pop and uh, Fuzzy, we're getting ready to go do some Coco basketball, Rockledge basketball this year. And that was easy peasy, lemon squeezy right there, gentlemen. Walks right in. Yep. 21 12. The lead is nine. That's two scores here on Brevard Sports Network. Coming up in December, open gyms there. As soon as Caleb gets the graphic, he'll get that up on the screen for you. But uh, 24 years of AAU basketball. And if you were with us at halftime, you saw some of the absolute greats, guys that are playing in the NFL that played for the Brevard Bulls. And Coach Hughes talked about the importance of. And Coach Franco as well, the multiple, playing multiple sports. And you know, let's see, Jay Sean Corbin in there. Nelson Aguilar was in there. Uh, you got Willie Gaines at Colorado. You got Raheem Sanders who's going to be in the NFL next Mark, year. Marcus May. Marcus May in there. I mean, you know. It's it's, a, and Chevelle Bowie, which and, is, it could, is probably could have, one of the. Chevelle Bowie could probably walk on right yeah, now. Right. <laughs> He's tearing it up in flag football right now. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw all of that. <laughs> Not even fair. You gonna end doing. up in the Olympics? <laughs> uh, don't even touch it. Yep, there you go. Penalty. Yeah, all those open gyms are gonna lead up into uh, the tryouts, and we'll put that poster out. Still working on the venue. I think it's gonna be something special. I, I would imagine, and you can you'll see that video too on uh, BSN. I would imagine that you get a lot of kids that come out, student athletes. I don't like calling them kids, student athletes that come out. It's probably tough to make cuts, ain't it? Yeah, it, it is, and before uh, we did make cuts before, um, but there was one year where we decided not to make cuts, and we had 19, 19 teams. And oh, was, my goodness. And it was torture. So I bet we, it was. We had to cut it down. Uh, a couple years ago, I cut it down to just high school to kind of get a different perspective of the uh, AU landscape, and now we're bringing it all back. My son will be – he'll you, be 8U, and he'll be playing on the 8U team, so – you guys play locally here anywhere? Well, we practice local, um, but most of our tournaments um, are going to be out of the um, out right. of the county for for the most part. Orlando. Well, let us know where these tournaments are. Absolutely. I know, I know some people, you know, that would let us in the stream at some of these facilities around the state. So we would love to come see it. This may be a penalty on Melvin Chargers if that far receiver doesn't move up a little bit. Huh. Running for your life! Oh, oh my. What a great His play. receiver fell down. That's tough. Tackled by Caden Burke. Clayton Burke. Oh, Caden, you're right. My bad. Look, I'm not, let me just shut up. 5-10 <laughs> to play in the third. You know, uh, whatever happens the rest of the way, and obviously coming into this game, gentlemen, West Melbourne was a heavy, heavy favorite based on what we saw during the regular season. But this has been a good job by this Melbourne Charger team. Absolutely, and they're undersized at that. So, you know, they're doing a good job holding up on the mm -hmm. trenches. And, and the Melbourne Chargers have a lot of 11-year-olds <laughs> versus, a, a, versus a, a full 12 U. And Caden has had himself quite a day, Burke, on a lot of these big-time stops. There we go, another one. Got him. Oh! Go. Oh, that's unfortunate because that's not a touchdown, but it is a big play. Yeah, Julian Baxter definitely wants another shot at that one. Yep. A great ball by uh, by Washington. It's the best thrown ball of the game, gentlemen. And yeah, that may have been uh, playing under the lights, man. Yeah, that's that true. Play, that's good. That's good. Uh, playing under the lights like this. Good, good point there because they don't play under the lights at their facility. Nope, nope. Actually, we uh, these kids usually are done by 5 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. We only have five teams, so we're not one of those age groups. With, uh, I can't even find an, an elevated Seven. place over there to broadcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had fun, though, when we came. I love the atmosphere. Got them open. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, no. And this could be – it's a pick six. Nice job by this young man. Pick six, touchdown, West Melbourne. That is Cooper Hershey, and Cooper Hershey's having a day, gentlemen. I believe he ran the kickback for a touchdown, and yeah. Hershey with his second touchdown of the day. The West Melbourne Colts have now scored offensively, defensively, 
and on special teams. And that could be the proverbial nail, gentlemen. Yeah, it's tough. You know, he had, had his guy open. He's got to get the ball out a little bit faster than he wants to because Melbourne's D-line can really, you know, they're, 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 they're basically in his lap pretty, pretty instantaneous, and, and he's sitting in there, and he's done a good job sitting in there all day. But that's the risk you gotta, you got to deal with. Cooper Hershey, what a game. What a play. Oh, he, got, oh, he, he might have taken a handoff. I, I thought he he's handed the ball off to the Melbourne Chargers yeah, there. He definitely did. He's, he got right in there. I'm trying to see what number that is. I, I wouldn't three. count the Chargers out, man. It's you don't a, think so? It's, it was still a it was a two-score game before the touchdown. Yeah, so. that's true. I you mean, got a point there. Technically, they had to score twice anyway. Yeah, so. it's still two scores. Yeah, eight and eight. They got the a kicker. problem is, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, the, the, the kicker that they would have had is sitting next to you. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that was the kicker last year. You kicker too? Yep. My man. I did it for my senior year, and I used to kick straight on. You call that a toe kick. A toe kicker. Don't try to, don't try to, don't try to <laughs> you know, fancy it up. You were, you were towing the ball. <laughs> Just remember, Coco Coco is playing Cardinal Gibbons with a toe kicker. I, I remember. Uh. I, I remember all the two-point tries. That <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it there. Anyway. You would say that was the having me as a bear. Well, I, you know, I mean, I, look, I, I thought a return shot was fair on that one. 27-12. <laughs> 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 oh. Right. No, I feel you. Nice recovery there. Nice right. recovery. I mean, just score quick here. Third quarter. Yeah. Reset it. You know, it, it, coaches, I'll ask you this. If I'm the quarterback, I'm asking coach, coach, I know. Let me take, you know, let's let's go out and take a shot right here on first down. You know, let, let's, let's try to get our – because, I, you know, other than overthrowing the ball there, you know, I think I, I, I go right. I let that young man know I, I still got all the confidence in the world in him. I mean, there's a lot of really basic stuff that, that you could really take right now that that, that this defense and in, in how it's structured when they're spread out just to get your the ball in space to playmakers. Number four is not going to come off the field here. This is going to be a trick play. And does he stop? Oh, he did. Oh, it been so good. <laughs> no one was even looking. I, I, know. Actually, I actually ran a play like that last year against Heritage, and we missed it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think uh, did EG try to fake punt like that against you, didn't they? Who? EG, when they played you, did they do a fake punt like that where they, the guy didn't actually run off? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, and the, from their own territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't know if it was actually completed. I just remember the No, it scene. was. It was? Yeah. No, they did. I couldn't believe they ran the play. I may have missed it. The key about that play is make sure that guy's on your sidelines. So yeah. They kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you just staying on your sideline like some kid from the team there, be like, yeah. hey, yeah. someone come card this kid. <laughs> Merch Marine Academy defeated the Coast Guard Academy today. Oh, yeah. That's a, little, a little uh, mini Army-Navy game. Yeah. Some Brevard County uh, student athletes. Yep. Teddy Brunger yep. had several tackles today. Starting linebacker for them. Power eye straight there up. There it is. Down. Still on his feet. Good run. Good run. Yeah, I don't I don't think this Melbourne Chargers team got any quit in them, man. I tell, no, I tell no, lot, not at all. A lot of people, man, this is one of the hardest working – Little league teams I've seen, they say out, out of practice till eight eight thirty sometimes. So really, yeah, oh, they, making all the parents happy. Oh, always, and making the, and making the city happy too because they're the ones that got to turn around. Turn the lights <laughs> out, right? Yeah, we came over at the beginning of the year and uh, profiled that unbelievable. Lloyd, team. Lloyd called something. I think there's a penalty here. What was it, the uh, coach? What was it, the ten uh, U team? We talked to. And my goodness gracious. Melbourne Chargers do have one of their best players. He's still injured. Um, I see him down there, number eight, Norris. 
I got to follow up on that. He's one of our best seven-on-seven -seven players. He's oh, yeah, lightning, he's a beast. lightning yes. fast. Yes, that's one of the uh, – I think he started late as well. I think he uh -huh. was dealing with an injury, and then he came back for, I think, two games and got injured again. But he – I was telling D. Allen, man, you he's need got to him. Oh, oh, no. Oh, I mean, that's a – that's I – mean, That's in the, the quadruple coverage there. He, that's a coachable moment. He's a uh, quadruple – Fourth down or third down. They took another big loss last week, number uh, 44. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw him in the wheelchair yeah, down there. Broke yeah. His, broke his kneecap or something like that. Oh, my Oof. gosh. Yeah, it was, it was ugly. 323 to go here in the third quarter. 27 to 12. West Melbourne on top. The Colts and the Chargers. T1 turns, hands. Good little cut back there. So that's going to bring up fourth and short, and I like the situation they're in. Now, the last time they had fourth and short, Melbourne shut it down. So, I wouldn't run this right up the gut again unless. Absolutely not. Yeah. Here's, be, a, here's, a here's where D. Yeah. Allen, do you, you make your money. Yeah. What's he call? What's he call, Coach Hughes? What's he calling? I, I say, call hits for a first down. I would call a toss sweep. <laughs> <laughs> we know you would. The Rockledge <laughs> versus Coco <laughs> offense. Toss sweep and a hits for a first down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. Well, hey, only on Brevard Sports Network can you get this in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> only Brevard Sports Network can cover you. Right. That is a touche, Caleb. Touche. It's all sweet. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, 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 my goodness oh. gracious. Holy smokes. Oh, That's wow. a highlight Twitter clip right there. In on that stop. Well, I, I, Billy's right. We can't read the numbers. But it was 50-something, and I want to say it was Brady Cleveland, the was, linebacker. Uh, yeah, 27 on the hit. Oh, was it 27? Yeah. If it's 27, it's Caden Burke again. Yeah. Caden Burke in there on that, and Burke absolutely destroyed the play. Destroyed it all. Allen, yeah. do you know it's still open? That freaking <laughs> hit. <laughs> Yeah, why am I, I gonna, don't think, I why don't am I gonna think, throw the ball backwards to go get a yard? There's no Brady Hart out there. <laughs> yeah, no. So <laughs> yeah, that's funny. They, and they've had some success with the tall sweep. I think they <laughs> just uh, the linebacker just read that yeah. so well. As yeah. soon as he saw the quarterback start reversing out, yeah. that was his fast key read, and yeah. he got oh, well, he almost did it too. It doesn't help that they got the running back. And well, the back I think was like ten yards back, right? Yeah, I mean it, it's it's. Yeah, I think what you're starting to see. Is this has been a very physical game? Yep. Yep. A lot of these, a lot of the players in the trenches are going both ways. Yep. Yeah. So you're you're beating that guy up when he's on the D line, and you're the right guard, right. and then then the series swaps, <laughs> and, and now you're the defense. You're right. So I think you're starting to see the the trenches get a little tired, and the linebackers are running free because that's K the sec that's the third time we've seen a linebacker almost take a handoff. K yeah. K yeah, right. K and Kane Burke is just having a night. I mean the athletes too, man. The athletes are starting to slow down a little bit. Yes. Too, I think this is going to be a run up the middle. They're getting the penetration. Oh, fumble! Oh. No. No, it was a shadow. They're getting penetration. They just outrunning it for the most part. And the, and you're right. Both both you guys are at the linebackers right now are just feasting. Yeah, you should have seen uh, Parham's interception last night. I, I did see it. I was there. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> talking in general. But uh, Samadre Hawkins' ball hits him right in the chest. It explodes into the air. Uh, Parham catches it, and Samadre just watches Parham run for the touchdown. touchdown. And he's just like, ah, that was mine. <laughs> uh, he, yeah, Parham did a nice job on that tip drill. Third down and eight. I set off eye, and, oh. yeah, that's going to be third and three now. That's tough. This has been a well-played game. These guys haven't committed too many of these. You're not seeing a lot of. You know, false starts and offsides. I and like the idea. These refs have had to co had to ref so many games. You know, that maybe the refs are a little worn down. Maybe holding the flags a little bit, letting these young men play. They've called the penalties. They've called have been the right penalties because they've affected the actual play. Yep. You know, he held the kid. Guy got around the edge. You know, those are the right penalties of this age group. And and, uh, and, all, and the refs have all been out here all day, but there there's like ten of them out here. Yeah, so they've been okay. rotating. Hold for contained. It's twenty-one. Ooh, gets outside. You're, yeah, you're right, coach. Good run. And look at seventy. Look at the speed. Oh. Look at the speed. Oh, look at the speed down the sidelines with twenty-four point six 
seconds to play. No flags. West Melbourne, I believe that was Cooper Hershey again. He's I'm having a, a day. I'm a, and I'm going to give a shout-out to number 70, so great effort. That's actually my, my nephew. So. Okay. That's your nephew? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's going to be he's a, a left a, tackle in the NFL one yeah, day. Yeah, he got to gain some weight, though. But well, he's, he's pretty good DN right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cooper Hershey, though, gentlemen, what a day for him. His third touchdown. Yeah, I just did. I said 24.6, and six, 24.6 seconds to play. And there's that same play they ran. Same and he's in. And Number with 20, 27. Yep. It's now 34. 12, and definitely, definitely this next possession's got to be points, gentlemen, for the Chargers. What a what a day by Cooper. And I'll tell you what, that, that once Cooper Hershey got outside and broke that tackle, that was all speed down the sidelines. Yeah. Where do these young kids get, young student athletes get this speed? Uber Zotti. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I thought you. I was really. I thought you were about to have Caleb flash up a flyer. <laughs> <laughs> West Melbourne score. So the fourteen U game is Coco and Melbourne. 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 Okay, yeah. it's going to be fun. Yeah, but rematch uh, earlier in the year. It was a really good game. They played at Coco, standing room only. So was it really? Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot more people here now than there was when I got here. Coach Coach Steve of uh, um, Barefoot Steve. Tends to draw a crowd. Yeah, he, he will. He, he will talk it up. He will talk the game up and make sure everyone turns yeah. out. <laughs> they do a good job here. Although this year, I said we're going to talk to Billy Palmer about closing all that damn parking down. I mean, and last year, if I'm not mistaken, y'all were out here till like one o'clock last year. So yeah, I know they had the cheerleading competition before. Yeah, last year, man, so they moved it. Now we're going to do that too this year. We're going to broadcast the All Star Game. And we're going to do the cheer competition. Yep. Crystal Vesey talked me into doing the cheer competition. So, But I told her the only way we were going to do the cheer competition was if she provided me with help in the booth. Because the only thing I know is a base and a flyer. And everything else in between, she said she got us covered. So we got a guest broadcaster that day for the cheer competition. Caleb is actually... A closet cheerleader. He he knows he was he led his Powerpuff cheerleading four years in a row. And what you didn't know is he's a flyer. There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, a strong ladies on that team. <laughs> oh, got him. Caught it. T one to T two again. Nice yep. catch. He was uncovered out here. So yeah. Why not? Mm-hmm. No quit. No quit. Like Franco said, I think they're really missing number eight, man. He's a speed yeah. demon, man. So I don't think they have that break breakout guy who can take it 60 in one play. Yeah, he's just standing there. You got two one-on-one backside, no safety help. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's nobody back throw there. Throw a slant. There's no linebacker, nothing. Does D. Allen see it? Yeah, he sees it. He sees it. They just pointed it out. There yep. you go. There it Ryan is. Fade ball. That's a harder, much oh. harder throw there. I think he's telling him right now we should have cut that short. Yeah, because you're going to run for days on the slant right there. That's why, uh, you know, you got to – it's tough because you know you're when you when you run this style where you're you're, you're, fil- you're you know you're running the player back and forth you, you lose a lot of your ability to change you know where you could change that route on this outside. Fourteen point five seconds to play in the third here. Fourth quarter coming up. Thirty four twelve here. Melbourne baiting him to go deep. He's going to give him another chance. There, there it is. is. Yeah. Oh, good coverage. That's good coverage underneath there. Like Franco said, I would just throw the slant. I think it'll be an easier throw for the guy. Do it again, right. Yeah. I mean, it's you're throwing hash to hash, yeah. hash to numbers. The ball's only going about 10, 10 yards down the field at the end of the day. It's a far throw, but if he runs you know, slant, he's 
catch it and score. And yeah. or, so, or cut it split now. So and, and he's taking away. He's taking away the inside. You just give him a little Javen Boggs outside foot shuffle and come yeah. back underneath. He's lining up on the top of the numbers, man. I would bring that thing into the hash. And yeah, if you're going to throw a seam for field, sure, yeah. make the easier throw for a T2. Somebody get a camera on Coach Freddie Goins. I just read a comment that said Miami's driving the tie with under a minute to go. Oh, man. Go Gators. Oh, Got there him. it is. Oh. oh. Intercepted. Nice catch. Good concentrate. Don't tell me. Is that Cooper Hershey again? I believe that's number one. Is that number one? Okay. It's Israel Huey. Is that one? Uh, I can't tell either. Yeah, you can't tell. What it's either terms. one or 21, and if it's 21, it's Cooper Hershey. If it's one, it's Israel Huey. I don't know whose idea it was to have camouflage jerseys. Yeah, well, but Billy, Billy warned Caleb before the game that we would have difficulty I, with the I would numbers. love to have seen the referees throw a flag on Billy to start <laughs> the game for his uniform. Just because. <laughs> <laughs> Could have affected the whole game. Then they don't get the kick return. I mean, I don't want to bring everything back to the referees, but. <laughs> and I think you're going to get a heavy, heavy dose yep. of the 12U run game. Right here. 12, uh, 14U will come up in 10 minutes, or at least youth football 10 minutes, which is 30. So, uh, yeah, you'll see. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Caden uh, Taylor, yes, we will be in South Florida next week with the Space Coast Panthers. 34-12 is where, it's where we'll be. And uh, so Caleb's going to show you the video telling you about the Brevard Bulls, and we'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter in just a moment. All right, welcome back here. I want to thank uh, Coach Coach Hughes and Brevard Bulls basketball, two decades plus of excellence. And start of the fourth quarter here with West Melbourne in front, 34-12. And Coach, I'll take a couple minutes here and um, talk about this Melbourne Charger program and uh, how it's been this year. Um, it's, it's actually been a surprise to me. Um, last year it was the Hurricanes. Um, this year, this was the first year for the Melbourne Chargers. They wanted to kind of get away from underneath the, the pile umbrella. Um, so I think it's been a success. You know, you already got one team that won the Super Bowl. Um, I'm still a little angry because my uh, my 8U team should have won it. But um, I heard that was the best game of the day. Yeah, yeah, last week, last week. Yeah. Or are you, are, uh, today, actually, yeah, it yeah. was. It went in the double overtime, I yeah. believe, and they scored on a QB sneak. Um, we actually beat the Titusville team 12-0, and we lost to Vero oh. last week 6-0, which is oh, the same man. Score Titusville today. But Sounds like a really competitive division at yeah, AU. Yeah, I think that was the most competitive out of all of them. You had about – Yeah. yeah. I, w I would like to see the 9U and 11U uh, age groups expand a little bit. I know it's not a lot of kids that – show up but i would like to see that expand a little bit big run by jason he just throws people off yeah. and he'll have a first down with 831 yeah i was impressed with the, you know everybody and the way the program was run and so all right guys um we're getting close here this is the fourth quarter i don't know that Mel well, I, melbourne just don't won't have the possessions to, to to come back on this one 
Franco, you've seen that 14U Coco team. What do we need to look for when that game comes up? That's the best 14U team I've seen. I think that 14U team beats most of the JV teams in this county. No, a hundred percent. You'll see it tonight. Wait till when they're when they're lined up on defense. They're coached well. They're all in the exact right spots. Um, their offense Little fumble balls out. Yeah, the offense is uh, is loaded with talent. You know, quarterback looks like Cam Newton. So so do they beat the Coco JV or you plead the fifth on that one? Um, uh oh, bud. I mean, there's a few guys on that. I mean, there's several ninth graders on that Coco 14U. Yeah. But, uh, so a lot of them should have been playing JV. Could have been playing JV. Could, they week. could have been. We got a good youth league. They, those guys will. I mean, you play JV football, you are playing five games. Right. You know, and you and we That's got true. a good youth league. And what Rashad and Tony have done with that 14U, and now they're going to play. You know, ten games in the season plus playoffs. Plus they'll, you know, if they if they do what they should do tonight, win. You're talking a 15, 16 game season. Right. Yeah, that, that beats the hell out of five JV games. I mean, one of the best players on their team, uh, number three, is uh, Keese's brother. Yeah. He's, uh, who had another uh, awesome night last night, blocked the punt. Yeah, he did. And, and, and you got one playing on your varsity squad right now that could be playing 14U into Marion Walker. Yes, yeah, it could be. Number another, eight. another. Number eight beast, too. Number eight uh, for Coco. He's a monster. Joe Dope. Now, what about the Melbourne 14U team? Um, I mean, their base, they're, they're relying on number zero. Yeah. Uh, they call him Megatron. Um, number two, uh, Tyquez, he'll be a good one at the next level as well. And then the quarterback, uh, number eight, I believe, and the running back, number five. That's You know, you stop those four and, you know, you can beat them. A little tush push. Hmm. Coach, you got. I uh, want to talk to you Not, again. Good win last night. You got uh, got Mainland next week. What I said last night on the post game show, I could see a scenario. Look, Mainland came down last year and flipped the script on Rockledge. So I could see a scenario where defensively Rockledge is able to slow that team down enough to flip the script. I know you guys are going into this week with a great deal of confidence. You beat Jensen Beach last night. That's a that's a huge win, I think, for the program. Um, what are you looking for from your guys next week? I mean, I think the big thing for us is just trying to come out um, a little bit with a little bit more energy. Yeah. We, uh, we came out super flat last night. It could have been because we had the kids there from 10 a.m. Uh, so, that you know, but just come out with some energy. Treat. I think you can. we can treat next week as a, as a uh, state championship game. Yes. Yeah. You know, the top team in 3S. So uh, come yeah. out with some energy and play Rockledge football, and hopefully, you know, I, the chips fall where they may. You know, I, Edmund McLean Jr. there nearly into the end zone. I think, yeah, I, I, I think this is the same scenario faced last year with Rockledge. I think Mainland was a four or five, and they came into Rockledge and won a barn burner, you know, a, a, a grudge match. So should be interesting. Coach, you got Danell in next week. What do you know about them? Um, oh, so no, I was trying to look up because because you know the word on the street about Touchdown. mainland uh, is that they were in Wildcat almost the whole night yeah. uh -oh. against started, Satellite, yeah, and that yeah. their quarterback may be out. Oh, Edmund McLean Jr. And I think I think without without the uh, without that quarterback, it's, you know, who got, I think he got banged up against like Mary early. I, I think. It's, it's anybody's game. Yeah, anybody Lake Mary lost last night. No, that, did they lose it? I thought they, they won did at the they very come, end. Did they come back yeah, and win? They, 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 came they back. won okay. at the very, very end. 42-38 against Boone. Wow. I think it was like they were trying to say it was like the ultimate trap game, but, you know, Boone has got athletes. and, and uh, not a bad football played, team. You know, Lake Mary's defense is, has at times been really stout and at times has really struggled. Yep. Throws. Caught. Two. A pop uh, pass. Yep, little little forty-one twelve here with six forty-one to play, and wow, uh, this is—I mean, this was a this was a very good football game coming out of Evans, fourteen to twelve. Since then, twenty-seven nothing in favor of West Melbourne, and I don't know what changes they made, but uh, I mean, I think it all comes down to the to the one play. We, we, we yeah. was right in front of us, fourth in a few inches, and 
they don't get that conversion, huge hit by the linebacker. Yeah. They were all pumped up. Two plays later, you know, they're in the end zone, and then now we're counting points and trying to figure out how they come back. Somebody said, uh, no, it, it will not be Vero Beach. Um, look, I mean, you'll have to go on social media and find out why it won't be Vero Beach, but it's not Vero Beach. It's Coco and Melbourne in the 14U game. So. Yeah, so did not let um – I think you know we played them last year in the first round, playing them this year in the second round. Yeah, you know they're they've 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 got athletes. Oh. Um, you know they don't have the trenches that we have, and I think that'll ultimately be the deciding factor. You played them on a Saturday last year. Yeah, Saturday day game last year. Yeah, hurricane make up six forty one to go, and Jace Richardson bowls into the end zone, and it's forty one to twelve. Now I guess there was a flag on the previous and. West Melbourne and Billy Palmer and Corey Durfus and that entire coaching staff are on their way uh, for a Super Bowl. I know they got it two years ago. Durfus and Palmer did. Uh, we had Billy Palmer Sr. up here in the booth, if you remember that one. And there you see on your screen there the Brevard Bulls Spring Classic coming up March 23rd, 24th. State qualifier, three-game guarantee. Coach, what's that all about? Um, it's just uh, previously it was it was actually uh, named the Adidas Classic. We've been running it for just as many years as we've been, you know, running the organization. So um, this is the first year it'll be called the Spring Classic. It'll be hosted uh, by us, but through uh, at U.S. Amateur, which is gotcha. which is a one of the big organizations around the world. So. Hopefully we get a good turn. We already got some teams committed. We got the Trench Coast Titans coming up. Hopefully we get some local teams, and hopefully we have you guys out on Championship Sunday. Yeah, that'd be fun, man. We'd love to come see that. Basketball in the spring is always a good time. Yeah, but look, but you got I gotta make you aware when you're dealing with eight U and nine U. Yeah, the parents are the ones you got to worry about. Yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I got that. You should see some of our uh, some of our emails and Facebook messages. Oh, oh my goodness! How come you didn't profile little Johnny or little <laughs> Jane? And, Did you guys uh, see the UCF Oklahoma State score? No, what was it? You see, unranked UCF beat number fifteen Oklahoma State forty-five to three. Wow! Boy, they wanted that first Big Twelve win. Now, I, I listen. I know they got it last week against Cincinnati. But I don't count that as their first Big 12 win. Yeah, it's their first Big 12 rank win for sure. Right. Well, and, and they could have had a couple. They came others. from the American with Cincinnati. So. Yeah. And that I got a, a I got a, foe. You mentioned UCF. I got to shout out my guy Thomas Wiseworth. Hopefully he. Oh uh, yeah, gets a tight end. Scholarship so. Thomas made. Uh, yeah, I know you're going to remember this, Coach. Hughes. Thomas made one of the best plays you'll see a tight end making an all-star game a couple of years ago over in Orlando. I do remember. He yeah. caught the ball and just absolutely yeah. destroyed the defensive back. He, um, we called uh, Bend. Yeah. yeah. Franco one was high bend. Yep. Yep. I couldn't believe the two guys that I was the most impressed with in that was 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 him uh, and then the, the safety um, who's at Virginia Tech. Um, one uh, Devin, it. Devin. Yeah. Yeah, he, actually, he yeah. actually touched the field today. He did? Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he picked the, the ball off in practice. Davin Widener threw a ball across the middle. He picked it off with one hand, and he ran down the whole sideline with the ball still in just one hand, yeah. pointing <laughs> it at Davin as he scored. Yeah, I think he, he still has, he has some work to do, but uh, I think once he realizes his potential and his coaches, uh, Coach Marv, uh, Coach Pry, the guys at Virginia Tech, they tell him all the time, man, that, you're different. You know, you're one of those guys who you'll see on Sunday. He just got to tap into that, those intangibles and pull it out. His little cousin, uh, Cam yep. Alves, is on the 10 U that just won the Super Bowl. He's probably the best corner in 10 U yep. at his age. Had and he's, a, and he's an awesome today. basketball player. Had a pick today as well. Did he? Yep. 5.37 to go and, here. And the little brother is the one that's the real football player. Uh, Cameron, I mean uh, Carter. Well, he looks just like uh, Cam, right? Yep, yep. I always do a double take when I see him. Delay a game here, and that'll back up Melbourne five yards, and it'll be second down and 20. So I'm going to say congratulations to 
Coach Palmer, Coach Durfus, Coach Corey Durfus. And the rest of the West Melbourne staff. If you've ever been inside that trophy room down there, they'll take another one and put it inside. They could probably take all the trophies they got in that room after 52 years and make enough money in crushed metal. <laughs> all picked off. And this is not going to be a pick six, but it is picked off by Tyrese Jefferson. I think he could have scored on that one. But yeah, he a I think, sportsmanship on that one. Yeah, it was a good job by him to – Tyrese Jefferson with the play there, and he just – you're right, Coach. I'm watching it because we're 30 seconds behind. If he turns the burners on, he's gone. 5.03, and let's see what Billy Palmer does here, gentlemen. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of Billy Palmer up the gut here. Uh, you know, I, I – Billy, I don't – he'll probably he'll probably admit it, but the first half and the early part of the third quarter – honestly might have been what ultimately propels that really good West Melbourne 12U team to make a very, very deep run. Because up until this point this season, you hadn't seen them get knocked in the mouth. You hadn't seen them have a team return, you know, the opening kickoff. They had to deal with a lot of moments of adversity tonight that they had not dealt with yet. And you don't want to deal with them in an elimination game against some random team that's, you know, from Jacksonville. Right. No, you're right. And – you know, you go back to that county championship game. I, the way Billy talked to me about that county championship game was with, as, as if it were going to actually be a game. Mm -hmm. And it was 60 to nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, we were there. We were done in 45 minutes. Well, if you guys are in the ACY trash talk page, you'll, you'll understand why. Oh, no, guys, I saw that. Yeah, they get pretty rowdy. In yeah, I saw that. I knew that's why he put that 60 up. Yeah. Did I just see lightning? No. I hope not. That's just Coco warming up. Okay. They probably opened the bottle too fast. <laughs> oh, and here we go. You got a soccer ball. I don't know where. Yeah. Well. Tyrone. Just, can we zoom in on Tyrone down here? What is the stick doing back there, Tyrone? <laughs> he on his phone. He's real pain there. He's watching the film right now. He's getting yeah. ready for Manly. Yeah. yeah. We're going to give him the benefit of the doubt, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, you get to see the phone sitting on the uh... – Yeah, he's so late. Oh, he yeah, yeah, yeah I see it. Yeah, he's definitely on the phone. No, look, I'm no, right that's, here. That's that, not that, him. That, yeah. that over there. That's, that's him right here. That's him back. I don't want to hear nothing about the crew call the wrong call. <laughs> and nothing, nothing put, oh, going. yeah, he's right here. Right, right, here, here, in right, here. He's right a, here in the Melbourne box right hey, here. Hey. Right here. <laughs> hey. Yeah, he is. And I, should, I should text him and tell him to and tell him you're about him. Caught. Caught in 4K, as the kids would say. <laughs> Touchdown, West Melbourne here. And they get in, and that's a hard hit in the end zone. And it's 48 to 12. That be yeah, he, yeah, look at him. He's definitely down there. That's like a walking. He, he is not even on the chain game anymore. He is now, that is a walking stick. Yeah, that's funny. Hey, he's still collecting the check today, man. <laughs> a, good, a good check at that. If you know when these refs get paid per game, yeah, I would probably be. Out there myself next year. It, you're chilling. Checking out that mainland offense is what he's doing. 3.42 to go here. And uh, <laughs> that is funny. Uh, he probably fell asleep. Because you know it's a, it's a lot. You get you drive it's a long day drive all the way back guys. from Jensen Beach last night <laughs> to be on the sideline. At and it got to be here. 7 o'clock in the morning. 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's rough. And he's here. So, uh, West Melbourne and Melbourne set to wrap up here, 313. That will run the clock the rest of the way. So, we'll they reach that point here with a 36-point lead. But it wasn't easy in that first half. Melbourne, lots of credit to 
their coaching staff and their players and just a bigger, faster team. Pulled away here in the second half big time. 30, what was it, 34 unanswered points in the second half for West Melbourne. Wow. 14U game coming up in exactly about eight, eight to ten minutes. We're going to log off. Well, we'll stay here for the celebration of the trophy as we've done all day. And then we'll log off, and then we'll be back with that 14U, the final game of the night for the ACYAA, who's done a terrific job here today, as it'll be Coco 14U and the Melbourne Chargers 14U, and they'll walk off a penalty here. And I, and I don't know. I don't know if you guys can zoom in on the Miami Dolphin guy right there. Where's he at? On the sideline with the Miami Dolphins gear. Where's he at? Right here, the Miami Dolphins. Oh right yeah, yeah, here. down here. Okay. Yeah, that's actually Big Steve Hughes. That's my dad. Okay. Um, he's the one behind all those pictures you see, man. Okay. He, he spent, you know, the, the 24 years or whatever, getting all these kids that you've seen in the, in the game. So, and I took over four, five years ago. So he's the one behind. Look at stuff. him. Yeah. Okay. So he's got an easy day tomorrow. The Dolphins are on a bye week. Yes, yes, sir. I'm actually a Dolphin. Are you a big fan Dolphin too? fan too? Okay. Actually, season ticket holders. Are you? You go down there every eight Sundays, nine Sundays? Yeah, not not everyone, but right. for the good ones at least. <laughs> well, I brought my sons to the Giants Dolphin game this year because I just wanted them to see misery in person. Because okay, you know, we're all Giants fans. Yeah, I was gonna say you I, are a Giants. I want to say I was at that game. It was a good game for you. It was not a good game for me. And I will sit on the Dolphins side from now on in a beautiful shade. Yes. yes as I baked. Yes. That's one thing you got to realize that when you do go to a Dolphins game, there's only one side that's worth sitting on. Yeah. 40 seconds to go here. <laughs> there you go. Hand off. Ooh. Thank you nice guys. run. You got the backups in right now, so you might see him score a touchdown. I love the heart, though. I mean, don't get it twisted. That's T2. You know, yeah. he had a big catch. Had You know, he had a couple. He had uh, a good game. Yeah, got a, yeah, a couple, couple big catches. You know, one, uh, a couple bad drops, but he's still balling. Like, his brother's still right in front of him. Yeah, it's still their starting no line out there. I mean, Look you got to realize you're building for the future. Look at. And he gets a nice ball to his brother. Oh! oh! And that'll do it as the fireworks go off. Your final score, West Melbourne 48, Melbourne 12. And now the celebration begins. And Billy Palmer and Corey Durfus, head coach Corey Durfus, Lyle Neighbor. Billy Palmer, Sr., Keen Payne, Danny Russell, Justin Wright. I can't read the rest. Yep, give it, give it to the West Melbourne coaches. They took their lumps last year. This is the, this is the moment they wanted. They earned it. That, 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 was a, that was a great team win. And hats off to the Melbourne Chargers who yep, shout, fought shout them hard. Shout out to the Melbourne Chargers. Yep. A, lot of them didn't, uh, a lot of people didn't expect them to be here. They nope. upset yeah. Coco last week. Uh, I mean, and, they, and half that team is 11, yep. you know, and all of Billy's team is, uh, or West Melbourne is all, is all 12. So a lot of those kids will be back. All right. Caleb will show you the trophy presentation. The second trophy for Durfus and Palmer and company in uh, three years. And uh, so we'll be back. Show those Coco uniforms real quick. Those are bad-looking uniforms. All right, man. You got them? Good-looking uniforms there, and as the Melbournes uh, going to wear their dark jerseys. All right, I'll be back. Uh, Caleb will take you uh, through the trophy presentation and into uh, probably the start of the 14U game here on BSN. want to thank the Brevard Bulls basketball, and we'll be back with the final game of the day. Once again, your final score, 48-12. Have a good night, everybody.